All right, everyone, welcome back to another Jazz Piano School podcast. It's going to be episode number 198. My name is Brendan Lowe. I'm the creator and founder of Jazz Piano School. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, we have a lovely soundtrack of a leaf blower in the background, so enjoy that, right? Nothing I can do about that. But in this particular episode, one of our amazing educators named Sterling Koza is going to be talking about the power of the and, right? And you're probably like, what does that mean? Well, He's gonna help you learn how to swing better. He's gonna uplift your swing game, okay? And he's gonna be talking about the upbeats and how to utilize them in your playing to really bring the swing out of your playing. So we have an amazing episode coming right up. Just a quick reminder, we're almost at our 200th podcast episode and I have a very special gift we're gonna be giving away on that particular episode. So definitely go ahead and tune in to the 200th episode to get that gift. It's gonna be absolutely phenomenal. So. With that being said, let's dive right into this episode. Here we go. All right, hey everybody. Today we're talking about the power of the and. The and is what separates jazz from European classical music and other genres. Now, what do we mean when we say the and? Well, what characterizes jazz is a feeling of swing brought about by syncopation and offbeat rhythms. Now this dates all the way back to Scott Joplin in Ragtime. He first took, you know, European classical piano traditions and added in the ragtime element of syncopation. These are rhythms not on the downbeats, one, two, three, four, but on the offbeats. This would be one and, two and, three and, four and. And what the jazz greats did was they took that offbeat style and developed their own sound of rhythms on each of those beats. And the deeper you get into the jazz idiom, uh, the more each of those individual offbeats get their own sound. So we're gonna start to explore those today. And my goal is to give you guys some exercises that you can do to explore those off beats first individually and then develop that into a more holistic approach to deepen your sense of swing and this will help all aspects of your playing uh, getting deeper into that swing sound and I it, you'll find that you'll have a much more satisfying experience and it'll also allow you to connect with other musicians so that's what we're going to talk about today now the first exercise I'm going to show you is one uh, that's often touted uh, by the great pianist Barry Harris. And he actually shows this in one of his special sessions that he does. If you haven't seen any of those sessions that Barry Harris leads, uh, just check them out on YouTube. And uh, there's a lot of great knowledge in there. But uh, the first one we're going to do is clapping the ands. So if you've never done this before, what we're going to do is we're going to keep the big beat in our feet. So we're going to have one, two, three, four going in our feet. And what we're going to do is clap all of the off beats. So your hands are not going to match your feet. They're going to be on the off beats. The feet are on the down beats. So let's try clapping all the ands, and we're going to swing these. They're not going to be straight eights. They're going to be swung eights. All right. So here's the down beats. One, two, ready, go. All right, and you might notice that it starts to sound like its own beat. One thing you can do to help is label each downbeat one, beginning of each measure. So here's what that would sound like. One, two, ready, go. One. 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 Now, obviously, that gets a little monotonous to say out loud over and over again, so you can kind of just think it in your head for a place of reference. Now this exercise is great to be done at all tempos, it can be done fast, and it can be especially challenging doing it slowly, so I highly recommend that. But let's move on to the next part. So we just clapped all four ands in a measure of 4-4 four, four to get used to that. And what we're going to do next is clap individual off beats. So let's get used to what the and of one would feel like. So if we had a measure of one, two, three, four, we've got the beat in our feet still. 
for this exercise. Here's the end of one. We're going to clap end of one every measure. One, two, ready, go. One. One, two, three, one. So that would be the end of one. Let's do a different beat uh, just for comparison. Let's try the end of three this time. So here's our beat in our feet again. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. All right, so you might find it, it's helpful to kind of count either out loud or in your head. You might hear I'm counting a little quietly. You might be able to still hear it, but we're really just trying to feel that and. And think about how that one feels different than the and of one we did earlier. Now we could even combine the two of those and do the and of one and the and of three. Let's see what that would feel like. Let's get the beat in our feet again. One, two, one, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. So we gotta do the and of one and the and of three. All right, now I remember. Okay, here we go. And of one and and of three. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. All right, so we're starting to get a feel of how the end of one and the end of three sound. And what we want to really be thinking about is digging into that swing feel. And remember, again, we're not going for straight eighths. That would sound a little different. We're going for swung eighths to get this feeling of jazz in a swing style. And these eighth notes themselves can be subdivided into triplets, sort of a one and two, one and three, one and three, one and three triplet feel, or more of a 16th feel. And if you're curious about that, we can go more in depth to that uh, in a different video. But today, we're just going for a general swing feel, and this might be different for everybody. So we just felt the end of one and the end of three Let's do another uh, common rhythm, which would be the end of two and the end of four. And again, I encourage everyone to do this exercise for all four of these beats. I'm just skipping through just for the sake of time for this video, but it's very beneficial to do end of one, end of two, end of three, and then the end of four, all individually to get a feel for each one of those beats. Uh, but let's do two and four. Let's feel how that one goes. All right, get the beat in our feet again. One, two, one, two, ready, go. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right. So that and of two and and of four rhythm leads us into our next exercise. Now this is a rhythm that was frequently used by a lot of pianists and one in particular was Red Garland. You might notice that in a lot of Red Garland's recordings he's actually comping on the and two and the and of four for the majority of some entire solos um, and also comping for soloists. So this is a rhythm that he would use a lot and what this rhythm allowed him to do was to propel a sense of swing in his playing and also to connect with the drummer. You might find that drummers play a lot of ands of twos and ands of fours, uh, especially at the ends of phrases. The end is a, and of four is a big one that people will catch together. So that allowed him to you know, connect with the musicians in his band better by uh, accentuating those rhythms. So what we're going to do is we're going to practice those in our left hand, just like Red Garland would do. So take your favorite left hand voicing. We're going to do it over the context of an F blues for this exercise. All right. So I'm going to be using some three note voicings uh, in my left hand. And if you're curious about these, uh, they'll first be in the practice materials for this podcast. And then also we've got uh, some previous podcasts that cover blues left hand voicings. So if you'd like, you can refer back to those for some uh, supplemental help. 
So here's our left hand voicings on two and four. And when we're playing the piano, uh, we want to be as still as possible. So I'm going to refrain from putting the beat in my feet. I'm not going to have it in my feet anymore. I'm going to keep my feet still, but we're going to keep that feeling internally of each beat. And we're instead going to put the feeling in our hands. Okay, so here's the end of two and four in the left hand. Ready? One, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's the gist of that. I've got an F13 voicing. Now, once you get comfortable with that one voicing, you can then switch to go through the voicings of a blues. Now, just a quick review, we've got F7, B flat, 9, back to F13 uh, specifically, F13, and then our 4 chord, B flat, 9, maybe a diminished chord, back to F13, and our 2, 5, 1 at the end, some kind of G minor 7 voicing, and then an C9, our 5 chord, back to F. All right, so let's use those voicings and take them through a blues uh, with the left hand on two and four. One, two, one, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. 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 All right, so we made it through a chorus of blues using the and of two and four. Now these are rhythms just like Red Garland would play. And when you listen to him play these rhythms, you often hear that his right hand really locks in with the left. So why don't we hear what a little bit of soloing would sound like using this rhythmic accompaniment, using the ands. And this is something good to practice. So I'll just play a little bit of an example of what this might sound like and see if you can hear how my right hand is locking in with these left hand rhythms. Here we go. One, two, one, two, All right, so just for comparison, I'd like to show you guys what it would sound like if I, instead of comping on the ands, what if the left hand was just on all the downbeats? Let's take the ands out of the equation, but keep the soloing going. Let's see what that would sound like. So instead of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Not quite as swinging. Well, let's try it with some soloing and see if I can get the swing going. One, two, ready, go. Well, definitely a lot different. From my perspective, uh, it sort of felt like my right hand was fighting my left. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but if my right hand kind of instinctively wanted to try and get the swing going by playing some ands, my left hand was like, no way, not going to happen. <laughs> so uh, the lesson there is just that the left hand being on the ands really makes things function more smoothly. And as I said before, it'll really allow you to lock in with the rhythm section. If the drums are hitting some ands or if the bass player is uh, connecting on some ands, 
you're really going to be swinging like a well-oiled machine, you know. So this is a great exercise to practice. I highly recommend it. Try the voicings on the end of two and four. You can even experiment with other beats like the end of one and three. You could even do more creative exercises like try comping on the end of one and then the next measure the end of two. The next measure and of three. Next measure and of four. So as you can see the possibilities are pretty endless. So this is a great exercise and don't forget to focus on the feel. It's all about the feel. So uh, I hope this gave you guys some uh, interesting things to work on and I hope it gets you swinging in no time. All right, thanks. We'll see you next time. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Definitely go ahead and subscribe down below because we release a new podcast episode like the one you just saw every single Wednesday. And we release a new Lick of the Week every single Monday. And definitely go ahead and go to jazzpianoschool.com to check out all of our free jazz piano education, our podcast, our blog, transcriptions, and more information on our particular membership if you want to go that extra mile with your jazz piano playing. All right? Hope you have a fantastic day as always, and happy practicing.